It's nice to see you, Paul, again. Yeah. Now we're going to get technical today, talking about measurement system analysis. Yes, which actually um, seems to be a difficult topic. Uh, so actually, I'm not surprised that this is among top 10 major nonconformities for 2021. Okay, so what is the requirement then? Right. So this is where ITF make it very difficult for people like me to remember the actual clause number because it goes down to five digits. Yes. So 7.1.5.1.1 7 measurement system analysis. So this is number five major nonconformity. Mm -hmm. um, what is said about MSA in um, ETF? Right, not too many words, but I think a lot of misunderstanding. So we have to do statistical studies on each type of measuring test equipment system specified on the control plan. So I think the key word there is each type. And I don't think a lot of organizations, if we said, what are the different types of measuring test equipment systems that you use, they would have a logical answer about how they've grouped them into types. So for example, we might be using many micrometers in the manufacturing facility. We might have 10, 0 to 25 millimeter micrometers all being used in the same work environment by the same skill level people measuring similar product to similar tolerances. Under this requirement, unless it's specified by the customer, we don't have to do an individual MSA study for each piece of equipment and for each application that equipment is being used for. We can group equipment into types. So that's the first thing that I think a lot of organizations haven't done. They've just done a few random MSA studies but really what we should do is go down the evaluation measurement technique column in the control plan, look at all the different types of variable equipment and all the different types of attribute equipment and say, okay, what types of equipment do we need to consider measurement system analysis? And that's what the pe people are finding uh, the major nonconformities for because the auditor will go and say, oh, you're using a coordinate measuring machine, and that's specified on the control plan, show me your measurement system analysis, and they can't show it. Uh, you use visual inspection on your control plan. Have you done an attribute analysis? So it's, we should, for every type of system specified on the control plan, the organization should better demonstrate some form of measurement system analysis. When we are talking about um, control plan, I will ask you a question which probably will be very interesting for, for a lot of organizations. When I'm doing my audits, I can observe that people um, as an evaluation technique are putting only the kind of the instrument which is used for evaluation, for instance, caliper and yeah. nothing else. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, after doing some, some more digging into the detail, you can figure out which caliper if there are some additional documents, for instance, in the laboratory yeah. who is doing the calibration. But what would be the approach of the auditor? The, I mean, the, the most reasonable approach, shall it be a nonconformity when it is? Well, I, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't think, I've never mandated that the individual gauge number necessarily has to be on for every single gauge because uh, some organizations will use gauges that deteriorate quickly, so they have to replace them regularly. Um, some organizations will maybe have in the work area 20 micrometers, all of the same type, of the same resolution. So I think the type of equipment has to be clear. They can't just say micrometer, but they have to clearly state what type is it. Is mm -hmm. it a 0 to 25? you know, what, what type of equipment is being used. And that's where I think sometimes people are too generic. They'll say micrometer, vernier, um, plug gauge, but they won't really say any detail about the specific gauge that needs to be used for that part of the process. 
Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's that that's important. And uh, the other thing I think is uh, a misconception is that uh, MSA equals gauge R and R. So gauge R and R, uh, repeatability and reproducibility, is one technique that we can evaluate measurement system variation. But for variable equipment, we might do bias studies, linearity studies, stability studies, and maybe we won't do a gauge R and R. The requirement is that we have to do gauge R and R for each type of equipment. We have to do measurement system analysis. So the organization not only has to identify the type of equipment, they have to identify the most suitable measurement system analysis technique and decide, is that variable or is it attribute? And I think there's a big gap in many organizations about people's basic statistical knowledge of measurement system analysis. So they're given a random spreadsheet by somebody, they fill it out, but they don't really understand why they're filling it out and they don't know how to interpret the results. So I think, I think that is a, a, a big problem with this requirement. It's a bit like when we discuss problem solving, I think the root cause of so many non-conformances against this requirement is about competency. Competency yeah. in, in measurement system analysis. Mm-hmm. Also, we have to remember here that we have to follow the approach, which is uh, derived from the customer. So, of course, we know uh, two main approaches from AIAG and VDA. Yeah. And we have to actually uh, follow the rules from our customer. Otherwise, we absolutely, have the written agreement, the records of this um, this approval. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because the acceptance criteria for any study is not in IETF; it is in the reference manuals, which are either mandated by the customer or they're selected by the organization. The blue book or the orange book are not IETF books. Yeah, so an auditor can't say a gauge R and R, for example, has to be less than ten percent, because I would say, where does it say that? Yeah, where does it say that in the requirement? It doesn't. It has to be back to a reference manual. Okay, let's maybe close the topic of MSA right now, and let's go for another nonconformity. So this one will be the sixth one. Um, Will you present the sixth? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And the sixth, sixth one is about control of production, 8.5.1, which actually, again, is an ISA 9001 requirement. So remember back when I talked about nonconformity and corrective action, this is another one in the top 10 that is linked back to a basic ISA 9001 requirement. Okay. So let's stop here and hear you for another episode. Thank you, Paul. No, thank you.